Thank you. <laughs> RIP Prince. This is from the jokes. The dancers. Eric comes home early from work, his project manager having nixed an entire month's drafts. He sits on his couch with his laptop. He opens a beer and takes a sip. He looks at the internet, then he leans back and looks at the ceiling. The spirits of his friends, or their daemons, or homunculi, or wh however his brain represents his friends, zip to and fro, as if in a tempest, and flirt and laugh and fall upon each other. He compares his social stats to theirs. Question, how to structure the time between now and the moment of his death, when he will become breathless and immobile like a flake of desiccated arugula on a stovetop? Oasis. Two old men fucking in a desert. One says to the other, am I a pissant? The other removes the first one's penis from his mouth. He looks up at this mountain of a man. High above is an enormous black condor, slowly circling, now obscured by the standing man's long hair, now in view again. The kneeler leans back on his hands. The weight of his body makes his hands sink through the sun-baked surface and into the cooler, harder stratum of the desert below. The kneeler turns his head and spits. Do you think you're a pissant, he says. Presidential graves. Ramon's father takes the whole family on a trip in the 1978 Mustang. And in the uncomfortably cramped black back seat, Ramon diagrams sentences from As I Lay Dying. The journalist on the radio is talking about a famous criminal. That segment ends, and Van Morrison's Crazy Love comes on, singing love, 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 crazy love. Ramon rests his book on his lap and looks out the window. The mountainous country of Virginia slides along its track into Ramon's past. Suddenly, Ramon wishes very deeply that he had done something like the famous criminal on the radio, to which he could confess to his family, because it is only when you fail someone utterly and miserably, he once heard his aunt say, that you are finally free. He cannot imagine how free he will one day be. But we know, don't we? The snake. A snake, their backs streaked red with blood, appears from under an altar. The congregation leaves the church. The church is now empty. Fancy that, muses the snake. Organ music floods the church and rattles the stained glass windows. The snake, their mind flooded with the secret cause of that which is constant in human suffering, falls to their knees. For who among the angelic orders would understand this snake? Taken. A person who has trained in all the martial and spy arts for 40 long years has his daughter taken from him. He flies to Paris to find her. He has 96 short hours. Will he do it? He's handsome, makes five to ten million dollars per movie. His name's Liam Neeson. It's fun to watch a movie without caring about it while sitting in your chair on a Friday afternoon. All that weekend ahead of you. Feeling relaxed, drinking coffee, talking with people on Facebook and Twitter, looking at Wikipedia. Liam Neeson is Irish, which I did not know, <laughs> and presently lives in Millbrook, Millbrook, New York, which I've never heard of and know nothing about. In the freeze frame on my other screen, Liam Neeson is wearing a black trench coat, and he's looking down, determinedly. He's recently told someone he'd kill them, I go into the kitchen and make spinach and veggie sausage pasta. Liam takes out 20 men with an arm and drives to the cliff's edge. I want to do something worthwhile with my life. Thanks.